programming the step sequencer. So let's talk about programming the step sequencer and what we need to do to demonstrate that is actually create a track, soft synth, in this case we're going to do this with a drum because the step sequencer really works well with drums. And open up that for a second. This is what we're using, the Session Drummer 2. So let's pull open a program here. Doesn't matter what, for this particular purpose, we're just going to pick one so we can hear the drums. We can now close this. What we're going to do is open up the Step Sequencer right here in the menu. And you'll see that still nothing is here, but the minute we start programming notes in, you can do that with each of these buttons right here, that it adds a region out here. So this region now is the same length as the loop we're going to be doing right here. Now if we want to hear this, we can do it two ways. We can push play here, or if we want this to equal the same length of whatever else we're playing, Let's go to the transport. The keyboard shortcut for that is function 4. And what we can do with this is turn on looping and select this and say set loop points to selection. So that's the same length as that. We can close this now and we can push play. Okay, so now we can see what's going on here. Now in this case, Let's go over just this top area here. This sets the beats. So how many beats this represents right here. In this case, four. One beat, two beat, three beat, four beats. And then each beat has four steps inside. And these can be changed, of course. We can do much more than four if we want to. Say we want to do 16 beats. And then we'll need to scroll through as we do this. Okay, so that's how we set all that up. Let's go back to four just for simplicity. I'm double click on that, enter the value numerically, push return, and it brings it back down just to four. So the next thing is we have fit to quarters. So for instance, we have this, it goes on one and three. Let's add a two and a four, push play. So what this is going to say is, I want you to fit this pattern, which we have graphically set out, into this amount of quarter notes. So if we did six, check this out. So it's going to definitely change things around a little bit and take this pattern and fit it into a different amount of material. We can also push play here. So that's nice as well. And if we right click, this allows us to record straight from a MIDI controller into the step sequencer. Very powerful. I don't do it all that often because a lot of times I like to use my mouse for this. And if I'm not using my mouse, then a lot of times I actually like to just do it into a normal MIDI clip out here. But it's nice because once you've recorded in, you can then adapt it and move things around in this type of button workflow. Okay, next we have the modes for the style area, and this is polyphonic or monophonic. And polyphonic means we can assign notes vertically, all like this, which makes sense for a lot of drum type stuff. But if you're doing melodic stuff with the synthesizer, you could easily click on this and have it go to monophonic. And this is going to allow us only to have one note per vertical column. And you see everything else disappears. So only one per vertical column. So if we want to go back, we can do polyphonic and set them however we want. Articulation talks about how long should the note play. 100 being full length of the file, anything less than that, and it's going to just play a little bit of the file when it actually plays it out. Swing, 50 equals no swing whatsoever. Uh, going up or down changes the swing feel. 66 is said to be that the distance between beat 1 and 2 is double that between 3 and 4. So you get a more of the, like, the swing feel that you'd know from jazz. Portamento takes two notes, and if you change the pitch, it's going to actually slide between the two. So really great for synthesizer type work. 
Okay, so that's the top. And pretty powerful set of tools. Not too complicated, but definitely powerful what they can do. So down here, what we're going to do is select on all the different notes. And you've seen me kind of selecting different things here. I'm going to left click to add a note. And then I can right click to take that note away. So that's how you get there. If you want to change the velocity, you can see the default velocity is 100. That's what that, the number there means. I can double click on it and change that velocity value right here. So that's pretty powerful as well. We can also, if we have two notes like this, if I control click between them, it will sustain over the length of those. And of course I can control right click to remove that if I want. Okay, we also have some other tools here and what you can do with these are right click in between the different lanes here. Right click here and it's going to say insert row, delete row. We can cut row steps, we can copy the row steps and paste them if we have one copied. We can shift the pattern left or right. We can clear all. We can preserve pattern for step sizes. And then we can set default velocity for steps if we want to change that from 100 to something else. That's where you'll do it. And you can trigger note on click. And that's just saying that when you click, it actually plays through. OK, so those are some basic options with this. The only thing that we have left is over here. But we're going to talk about this and the lanes, the controller lanes, in the next tutorial. So let's move on to there at this point.